the hours that they wear it each day. Thank you. Now that's for our benefit. And we tell them we want to be scientific, so we want them to be honest. And I like to look at their charts when they come in, because they're filling them out. So let me see them. Bring them in. Now, if they've got it marked, ten and a half hours, fifteen hours, seven hours, and then they miss one day. And if it's in pencil one time and a red pen the next time, and blue pen the next time, I know that child's honest. But if I see it all in the same pen, <laughs> and it's 14 hours, 14 hours, 14 hours, 14 hours, <laughs> and if nothing's happening, they're not wearing it. If they wear it, something's going to happen. They make, make a groove in their neck, but something's going to happen. Even in adults, the teeth are going to move with one of these. I've corrected patients that wanted to go this way, even as adults. So don't let anybody tell you that it won't work. It will work. So the problem here is getting their cooperation. So these are ways of telling whether or not the child is wearing it. And get in the habit of wearing it, and it's no big deal. Look, you don't have to take it to school. You don't have to wear it in the daytime. And that's it. So it is second to the quad helix. This is the most powerful tool in an American practice that I have. Now, I don't know what the application is of it over there, but I'm sure that there are cases of this kind. They may not be as frequent as we have, but you've got some this way. And if you do, you should understand how to make one of these work. Because also, second to the quad helix, this is my second best money maker. But it looks simple. You've only got two bands on the face. But it is a powerful tool used correctly. But the whole profession got in trouble in the 1950s because they misused it. That's the reason I'm going through the mistakes that people made. Because they didn't understand it. So, even the construction of the band with the tube on the gingival side is a point that I make. Now there are commercial types made with the, with the thing too small here. This has to be a big enough radius. For what? Big enough radius, a radius of a circle. Some of them are pinched down and narrowed down like a tweed arch form. So we want this to be lateral. To hold the cheek away, so when the patient swallows, they're not going to pinch in and pinch the arch right here where it's narrow in a class two condition. So this helps to break a swallowing habit too. What we do is to put a bayonet stop like this, and this moves this to the buckle. Now, if I in a crossbite sometimes. Uh, From Rocky Mountain, I buy these, just buy the inside bow. It's thicker up here because it's 50 thousandths and 45 thousandths here. Now, I use that as a bumper and a bar. Uh, if I put it on the lower, I use it as a bumper. Suppose I'm treating a crossbite. I slipped a little bit. And I don't want to put a quad helix back in. I will put one of these in, sprung out. And I'll use it as an expansion on the motor, because a plain 22, 16 square wire may not be strong enough to give me that expansion. So I'll use the inside of this as an upper buckle bar. So I can, instead of pushing the teeth out, I'll pull them out. Sometimes if I want to contract the arch, same thing. Molars are out, get away from me. What I want to do is to bring them in. Then I'll use one of these and, and put it, spring it then to get it in. So I can use it as a contracting or an expansion thing for the upper first molars and the lower molars also. Now, when you, when you put it in the first time, advance it in the upper arch only about one millimeter. So put it in here and mark it. The technique is this. Write this down. 
cut it off so you don't stick the child all the way back in the back of the mouth. And lay it right against the top of the molar tube. Of the molar tube. Uh, Take a wax marking pencil. Uh, wax ma marking pencil and mark it on one side. Uh, then come around with a thing uh, held in place. Uh, mark the other side. Now, put the plier, the three prong plier, exactly on the mark. And bend the, bend the bayonet stop. And by doing it in this way, you will advance it automatically about a millimeter. So that's the way I do it. Put one side in and adjust the other side. When you put it in, this one should come in even with it. And when you first start this, this will be bent out because the tooth is rotated forward. So you have to make this short enough because we've got a rotation tube on the upper mole and it's 15 degrees. Each time the patient comes in then, you straighten it out just enough that you can feel it. Any more than that, it will make the tooth sore. Just enough that you can do it by feel. Then get a hold of it like so. Pull it out. And keep it rounded through the bicuspid area. Now, when you put it in, it should be the width of the tube or the width of the wire on each side. So it should be double the width of the wire. The expansion should be double the width of the wire. So when you put it in, you have to push to activate it to get it in. This is the idea. One month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, seven months, eight months, nine months, twelve months. You should have it back and rotated in about 12 months, unless you've got about a nine degree, a nine millimeter class two, and now you've got a lot further to go, so it's going to take longer to get there. If I have to go to Phoenix, I, it only takes me about an hour to get to the airport from my house. But if I drive to Los Angeles, it's eight hours. So it all depends on how bad the malocclusion is to begin with and what you can expect. Now, by the second visit. This should be back against the teeth. And we want it right at the middle third of the crown. We don't want the lip pushed up. And we don't want the lower lip pushed down. You can talk with it. You can. It's no, it's no discomfort. It's something you get used to. No big deal. Now, the child would come in and say, it's touching my teeth now. Yes, that's what I want. And the girl, when she gets, when we get one of these on, spends time educating the child and the mother what to expect. Now, the next big mistake. People seem to think if they get a hold of the whole upper arch at once that they will get more orthopedics. It's a mistake. Why? Because if I put a wire across here, the two halves of the maxilla can't separate. This is a palatal dividing appliance. Because as I use it, the two halves of the maxilla with the molar rotating and the molar expanding and the force directed buckle to the pterygoid plates. I showed you in x-rays how it separates the palate. Now, if you put an arch in there, two things happen. Number one is that you prevent that from taking place. But the second thing is that if you do tip the molar back a little bit, you extrude the upper incisors. And that's a no-no. The whole maxilla is going as a unit then. I showed you in three or four patients that the maxillary teeth didn't move. The major work is being done with orthopedics. It's rotating the maxilla right up here. Don't use a bite plate. Why? What, what happens if I put a bite plate in? I don't have any contact of the lower molar teeth. So there's nothing to expose the over extrusion of the upper molar. So do not wear a bite plate with the headgear. You do not want to over rotate the mandible open. Don't keep the inner bow away from the anterior teeth if they're spaced. 
I mentioned to you that at each visit we widen it. And then bend it in What we're doing is changing the arch form. So ever so gradually, the anterior teeth will have a little extra force on it. Here. And it's amazing that these teeth come out and these teeth want to go back anyway. Now, you will see this. I have seen it. We started out with protrusive upper incisors. We go along for a while and the, the, the dental bow is against the teeth. The child would come in and say, well, it doesn't touch my teeth anymore. Tell me what's happening. In a class 2 division 1, where is the lip? Behind the upper incisor. Now I start taking them back. And what happened? The lower lip gets to the place where it now will come in front of the teeth. And it will start grabbing the teeth and moving the front teeth back. See? Now another thing you'll see happen. A child starts out with a class 2. And in order to close their lips, they have to do that. Now, as the upper front teeth come back, what's going to happen to the environment of the lower teeth? Pushes the lower incisors back. Grabs them up a little bit. Now, once the lip no longer has to compensate, this drops down. The force of the lip is less, and so the lower incisors come in in space. So while the upper is going back, the lower incisor will go forward in some patients that are crowded. Don't wear it more than 14 hours. Don't put too much force on it. Don't wear a couple pounds. That's unnecessary. At the juvenile, the preventive phase, 350 grams is an orthopedic force. A typical case at the mixed dentition is 500 grams. 500 grams will move the whole maxilla. Here's a case I never noticed before that has a pegged lateral. So 500 grams is just about a pound. Now at age 12, the skulls are bigger, there's more resistance, so move up to 750 grams for a similar effect. After age 15, think of moving teeth, not jaws. Particularly if you have a deep bite. If you have a deep bite, then you use a utility arch at the same time, the same day. In fact, it may be best to put the utility arch on the lower first because you're going to be doing this to the maximum. Or the maxilla is going to be doing this. If you've got an open bite like this case, it's money in the bank. You don't have anything to do. You got the upper teeth up here, they're going to come back here. Lower teeth are going to come up. And you should have duck soup. So if you have a deep bite or if you have crowding in the lower arch, get in and put a utility arch on. Number 14. Just because it's class 2 doesn't mean it's a candidate for head gear. In straight profiles with reciprocal class 2s. What is a reciprocal class 2? A patient in which you can move the lower arch forward and the upper arch back the same amount. Now if you have the lower arch where you want it, that is a maxillary dental protrusion, or dental alveolar protrusion. The objective might want to be to move the whole upper denture back, not the skeleton back. But if you can move the lower teeth forward and the upper teeth back, that's another duck soup case, because you do not have to protect your anchorage that well. And you start that case out with an upper and lower utility. Open the bite up, and instead of using extra oral traction, use elastics. Now, it may take you just a little bit longer, but in my opinion, if you use vigorous elastics, 150 grams a side, 
and, and you wear them every night, all night, and the, you'll get good results. And the problem is children don't wear their elastics, forget them, and they leave them off at night too. Mm -hmm. If you're wearing elastics, usually we ask them to wear them all the time except when they're eating. So this is now the type of case for intermaxillary elastics. I said, don't discontinue it the, the minute that you have it done. Mm -hmm. Don't discontinue the headgear the minute you reach class one, number 15. Uh, fifth, uh, Even you don't want to stop at a class one because mm -hmm. tissues bend. You're uh, dealing with connective tissue. Uh, You're dealing with sutural ligaments. Uh, and they tend to shrink back to their original uh, length. Uh, Just like you moved an individual tooth. Uh, the ligament tends to pull it back. So think of the two halves of the maxilla as big teeth. <laughs> Rotate a tooth and it moves back. It'll continue to move back for six months. <laughs> so we over-treat rotation. <laughs> Don't try to have them wear a headgear when the thumb is still in there. They will oppose the pull of the headgear with the pull of the thumb. Now don't try to get it done yesterday. Don't try to get it done yesterday. Number 19. Tell the patient it's just going to be a year and then another year. It's a kindly treatment and it's gradual. And you tell them that this is the kind of thing it is. So after the first six to nine months, take a head plate. See where you are. Look through the tracing then and see where the mandible is. See where the maxilla is. Go through your four position analysis, but this time now just do it on the x ray. Now, the next time the patient comes in, show them the x ray. Believe me, they like to see what's going on. So don't neglect to monitor progress. All right, number 21. After the correction is done to your satisfaction, put a little retainer in. Three months, four months visits. Uh, Tell them a little bit about retainer maintenance. Uh, if everything seems stable, then discard it all together. Uh, and just let the child go. Uh, You've uh, done your orthopedic phase. Uh, now pick them up again just about at the time when the second deciduous molars are being shed. Tell the child. Uh, Tell the mother. That they have a rest period from treatment and we have set it up for normal development now but just as if with normal natural teeth some of the teeth may come in rotated some of them may be late in development and the lips may want to return to what they were before so there's a three to one odds that you're going to have to retreat or not retreat but finishing treatment on the patient the odds are one in four, according to what I found, that you wouldn't have to treat the patient again. The odds are the next 50% of the patients will require minor One-fourth of the patient may need significantly more work than the time of the second and so that's what you can expect, and that's what you tell a patient. Sometimes you can, at the second stage, wear nothing more than a position. It's amazing what a position will do when you construct it right and get a patient to wear it right. Now the last one. Don't underestimate its worth. I had one person that refused to play my bill. <laughs> he said that I charged too much for two bands in a child's mouth. I says, yeah, but I knew which button to push. Would you have paid me more if I would had to strap up the whole mouth? My knowledge, my guidance, and my care is worth nothing. I'm a professional person taking care of your child. Who's worth the most? Age eight? Age eight, okay. How's that? Here she is now with the... Permanent teeth developed at age 11. Notice that the facial axis is closed. Notice now that she's had orthopedics in the face. Look how the maxilla has been moved backward. Which one's gone backward again? The maxilla. Here, look at it. 
見てください。Here it is down here back now. こうです。Okay. Maybe a little confusing to you with all the teeth in. ちょっと歯が全部書いてあるんで見にくいかもしれません。Now the lower teeth. 科学の熾烈。Have come upward and forward. 上を前方に出ました。Usually they go up and backward. But here's one now that had a little crowding in the lower arch. And with the cessation of the thumb and the correction of the upper jaw, now the, the lower teeth came forward. How many bands and how much appliance was placed in her mouth? Two bands and a headgear, that's it. No other appliances whatsoever. So, one day a few years later, in 1976, I was operating at the hospital. I came out, my briefcase in hand, and I was on my way back to the office. And I looked up, and there was a young lady walking down the hallway in the hospital toward me in a nurse's uniform. And、uh, I looked at her, and the gears started to turn. で、この彼女を見て、なんとなく思い出しました。Hello, how are you? で、こんにちはなんて言って。Wait a minute. Dr. Ricketts! <笑> I said, God, let me see your teeth. So I saw her here. で、ここで見たんです。And I said, would you just come in and be my guest to get a head film? Because I've got, you're one of the patients that I saw years ago. Here she is at 25. 25. <laughs> so I, I got her now at 25 years of age. She's still plus four. She'd had her lower third molars out. And now here she is. 95 on the facial axis. 52. Down at 40. She, is she too protrusive? That's a nice female profile. Two bands. And a miserable malocclusion to start with. If we'd have delayed her or never treated her, it's conceivable to me that she might have even been a surgical case. Two bands. But my point is, it's a remarkable good business if you understand it, choose it properly, and know when it. Know what it can do. Yeah, know the possibilities. It's awful close, isn't it? That's five and a half years. Look at the mandible. Now, what the differences were was in the maxilla. And the teeth. So, Assuming then that this was the effects of the treatment, there was some remodeling that took place in the maxilla with the movement of the teeth from what I would have predicted it to be. You notice the upper lip in green was moved back, the lower lip in green moved forward. But as far as the mandible was concerned, maybe it was just a little bit under what I would have predicted for. Now we find that in between eight And 12, the next four years, the forward movement of the mandible now had gone back. The forward? Had gone right back to its natural predicted position. The mandible, right? It went right over the heads of most of the people in the audience. What went? It went over the heads. Well, they didn't listen? They didn't listen, but they didn't understand. All they could see was that Frank and the vice corrected the case. They really didn't care what explanation there was. It worked. But the point was that it did not make the mandible grow. それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それ
but is a consistency of the genetic endowment that's very hard to disrupt. Particularly since you're looking at 19 years of development and maybe one or two years of treatment. At best, probably all we can do is maybe modify it a little bit. And we'll talk next week about how we can possibly modify it a little bit with just the natural appliances that we use and intermaxillary elastics. Natural appliances? Natural the appliances we use and intermaxillary elastics. Is everybody caught up? Okay. okay, now we're going to calculate for Eva. And that is 23 millimeters, and half of that is 11 and a half millimeters. So there's our point, Eva. Now we're going to we're going to uh, predict this boy to maturity. So this would be eight, and this would mean ten years. Ten years and eight months. So we would expect with です。ので、この。え、10年8ヶ月経った時点ではこれだけ成長していると予測しています。で、スタンダーを見ることが後ろに行くと予想します。オッケー。Now えっと、公害は0.7mリ落ちていきます。7.56mリ下がることになります。So he has a little crowding in his teeth. He's essentially class one with a little over jet and a little crowding in his upper teeth. So very obvious just so far this is an expansion case. Now the argument will be how, what the modality of treatment should be to match him up for his face when he gets fully grown. So this part of his mandible won't change very much. Maybe a little appositional growth posterior. His symphysis is going to add on, contrary to the female, 2.7, almost 3 millimeters. So there's 2.7. And this will add all around. Like that. On archaeal growth is 2.6. So on the cord of his arc, twenty-eight. And half of that is fourteen. So we do that there. Fourteen and half of that We're going to superimpose On the new Murray. M M U to M U will cancel out. New Murray over the old Murray. Yes. We'll copy off the sigmoid notch. Eh, cancel out. Tokoro de, so the sigmoid no dotchi will copy mas. Now here's where some individual rules come in. If the sigmoid notch is curved like so, eh, de ma no kono notchi no tokoro ga konna fu ni ano wan kya tsu to maintain this shape. Eh, kono katachi wa ano osuraku yuji sareta mama seichou shimas. If it's a big wide open curve, you copy that and you copy the shape of where it's going to be. In other words, with an acute curve, the condyle is going to be up here. With a long curve, the condyle will be further back. 
Now, the second thing is to draw a line right here. And then, ここに一つ印をつけて。Just eyeball. Those two are even. これは目で見て印をつければいいです。それの 10.8 倍ですから 2.16。これを入れるのではありません、この形で。上につきます。後ろにもつきます。So we predicted now the condylion, nathion, length of the mandible. Adding this on, adding this on, taking it on the arc. Now we superimpose half m e r c u r Just as we added 2.7 here, we add 2.7 here. And this goes on the posterior border. In a male, it adds a little bit more onto the back than it does on the front. Now, from here, I suppose you could use the mandible as a template. And do something like this. Okay. All right, now we're going to. Superimpose again at half m u r r a y Now we mark off the RR point. Now at this point, we add point, point 0.35 millimeters a year. So 3.5. We put it there. So we take this at half m u r r a y Put our finger here and just rotate that back. And this has given us now the mandible. And we have traced the head of the condyle or the coronoid. Do the same thing. As we did before. And he's now 63 millimeters in length. So we have our new side point. This is from Pogoni on here, so we got a new PM. Corpus axis. And the assumption is. At the oral n o m a n it may vary a little bit. In some cases like this, it actually will reduce. But we'll put a provisional in here. Plus, a plane usually will drop. A little bit bad. 普通だと後部平面は後ろの方で多少落ちます。下がります。So there's a prediction of his mandible. これが科学の成長予測です。All of that then we can do off of a predicted mandible superimposing on z i So you see how important z i is to us. Now comes the most critical part of the whole forecast. Now we're predicting what the mandible is going to do in the face. We've already grown the cranial base as a reference to start with. Now we've got two or three schemes that we can use. The one that I have been using for some time, but one that I have to change in the breaking facial pattern. It's pretty accurate here on the development of the condyle. Because the condyle is going to go back in the fossa. Or back together with the fossil. So we've said now that the condyle is going to be here. The next question is what about this? So one of the things that we can do is to see whether or not this line falls on that. Now it does. So 
There's one way of looking at his growth. But in brachyfacial patients, as he is, this throws the chin down too much. So what we will do with him is to superimpose here. And we will then line up his new xi on his new and his old xi axis. And in this type of cases, this technique works the best. Now, in 10 years, there's a one and a half millimeter shift. So now what we're going to do is to drop from this orientation. We're going to drop his Bayesian Nasian line. BA NA line を下げます落とします。One millimeter and a half. 1.5 ミリ低くします。Like so. こうです。I have oriented the condyle is on the Frankfurt plane moved back. コンダイルが。The predicted amount. I have his xi on the original xi axis. On the extension of the original xi axis. Yes. On the extension of the original xi axis. Right. Right. 古い材軸、前からある材軸を延長した延長線上に。Now this is just awful amazing how this works. これ。